Welcome back to Non Desk Con 2022. I'm one of your hosts, Phil, the Mile High Mouth, and I'm here with Julia Bilderbeck of Geek Colorado. And we're here at Non Desk Con 2022 with Lauren Landa. And so, Lauren, just in case our studio audience isn't aware of who you are and what you do, who are you and what do you do? Who am I and what do I do? Uh, I am a voice actor from Los Angeles, and if you hear loud creaking, it's not me farting, I swear, it's the chair that I'm sitting on. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm making everybody die right now. Uh, <laughs> uh, you guys might know me as the voice of Annie Landhart from Attack on Titan, Merlin from Seven Deadly Sins. I was also Sailor Neptune in Sailor Moon, uh, Juno in Beastars. Uh, I was also Female Robin in uh, Fire Emblem and Super Smash Brothers. Uh, I was also Karin Kanzuki in Street Fighter V, Jan Leisha in Soul Calibur V, and uh, Squiggly in Skullgirls. I know that I'm forgetting a ton of others. Oh, Kyoko Sakura from Madoka Magica, and a lot of others. So, you mentioned a lot of different genres that those animes and stuff could fit into. What is your favorite genre to work on? <sighs> I like drama. I like them, the more dramatic, the better, because it distracts me from my own personal life. So, no, no, <laughs> no, as an actor, uh, I just love the dramatic performances. So Attack on Titan is definitely one of them that I always have so much fun doing. Um, it, it's just a blast. So definitely the more dramatic performances. I've done a ton of comedic performances, but the dramatic ones are always really fun. And Attack on Titan is pretty dramatic. I mean, there's a lot they have to put into there. And a lot of that, especially with like the horror aspects of it, there's a lot of screaming and the, the militaristic grunts and stuff for that. So how do you recover from those types of um, sessions? I am very working? fortunate. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you. I am very, I'm very fortunate enough that um, Annie doesn't really scream a lot, unlike uh, you know our main protagonist or antagonist, however you want to view him, Aaron Yeager. Uh, Annie's really not much of a screamer. The only times that we hear her yell or scream are either when she's in the female Titan form, but that's only in the first season so far. Um, and there is another scene where she gets really angry and she yells, but that's when she's younger. But other than that, Annie is very calm for the majority of the time. So I really am not vocally tired after an Attack on Titan session. It's more so, uh, you know, it's more so my brain might be tired from focusing so much because Annie is very focused. So, yeah. So with being tired, you know, I know you guys have a very hectic schedule between, you know, doing your recordings, running to cons and everything. What other um, cons or events are you doing this year? Oh gosh, well, some of them I don't know if I can say just yet because they haven't announced me, um, but I can say their locations. Um, I will actually be doing a retail store signing on September 24th in La Habra, California. My next convention is actually going to be Collecticon in Kansas City, and that's gonna be a lot of fun. And let's see, what else? Uh, I'm also gonna be a guest at DerpyCon this year. I guess that's kind of perfect because I am a little derpy. Uh, <laughs> I'm also gonna be at a convention in uh, New York. I'm also going to be at another convention in, where is it? Oh my goodness, uh, Austin in December. So yeah, there are a good amount of events that I will have for the rest of the year. Sometimes, uh, events can be planned later on in the year, so there might be more that pop up. You have no idea, you never know. And going back to those, um, away from those events and to this one here, what do you think so far of uh, non Descon 2022? Well, first of all, uh, it's the 25th anniversary and I feel truly honored to be back here because I, I'm sure you guys all know that I've been a guest here many times before. And there isn't a time that goes by where I'm not grateful that they continue to bring me back every so often um, because I, I truly love this convention. Every time I come to this convention, it's like coming home. Uh, you know, I truly think that the NDK family is, they're very dear to me. Um, but the fans and the attendees are all so wonderful and, and great. And not to mention this amazing hotel. Uh, Gaylord is amazing. The Gaylord is fantastic. It's gorgeous. 
Um, the convention center is big and spacious, which is also wonderful. Um, it's just been fantastic, and it always is. Have you gotten to do much exploring of Colorado outside of just being here for the con? Not really. Whenever I come to NDK, I don't really do much exploring because I'm mainly dedicated to the convention and what I'm doing at the convention. Um, and plus I have family in the area, so if I ever really wanted to see some Colorado, I know exactly where to go. <laughs> So with Colorado, someone, a little birdie, told me that you were also into horror. Oh. Did you know that Colorado's also started its own horror fest? We have Colorado Horror Fest coming up next weekend. I heard about that. Yeah. I think someone, I don't remember who said they were going, but they told me they were going. Who's going to be there? Um, I'm not quite sure of all the guest lists yet, um, but I know like Xander Smith, who's worked on like American Horror Story Ooh. and Godzilla. He's going to be there. He's a graphic artist. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just really cool. It's still in its infancy, um, wow. still growing. Um, but I was just kind of curious with, you know, that coming up, what kind of horror do you like? Well, I definitely am more of a supernatural um, fan, I would say, of horror. I'm not a big fan of slashers. I think they're fun, like they can be fun, but I'm, I'm not a, oh, slasher. I'm just, I'm just not. Um, my films tend to, my favorite type of horror movies tend to go to the, um, the ghost stories or the demonic possession stories or the cursed stories, those, those kind of things. Um, just because they're exciting and they're, they're fun, but, um, I, I definitely appreciate that kind of horror. So I, I have many horror movies that I love that still scare me to this day, but I, that's why I love them. So more of an elevated or emotional horror story. Yes, I would say that. Um, a slasher film, I, I, you know, I, I know plenty of people that love slasher films. Oh, all those stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to me, they're just a little too campy. Uh, you know, I, I've never seen the whole thing of Friday the 13th, but the first one. I already know who the killer is in Friday the 13th. Uh, Halloween is, of course, a classic. Um, but I've just never seeked them out. I've never seeked them out as, oh, this might be a good horror movie. I just don't. But um, that's not to say I don't understand why people love them. That's just not my favorite. But, you know, films like Poltergeist or The Exorcist or The Exorcism of Emily Rose, those have really stuck with me. And they're wonderful films. So with you loving horror and stuff, is there ever a horror series or just a horror movie that you wish you could have been in? Ooh. That's a very good question. I don't know, actually. That the ones that already been, that yeah, has already been made. Yeah, those already been made. Oh gosh, probably The Conjuring, because The Conjuring is also an amazing film. Uh, James Wan is a fantastic director. So. And then going back again to you mentioned like you like the more supernatural, the more emotional type, of the more elevated one. Now, when going back to emotional horror, um, the one thing about emotional horror is that it does resonate with us outside of the horror movies and such. In fact, the charity that we have this year is another one that's focused on mental health. Oh. Um, since we're still in the pandemic, we're still, we've still been kind of in that weird lockdown mentality for, since 2020. Mm -hmm. um, what have you done to avoid the, the drain to help deal with that, that we might get from that. I swell, knock on wood, somewhere. Um, hopefully we don't face another shutdown. I'm hoping we don't. I feel that there is still a lot of fixing and healing from the last couple of years. Um, I think we all need to help each other. I think we all need to be patient. Uh, I don't, the pandemic is still going on. I, I don't believe it's over. Um, but what do I do is that I, it's definitely better now than it was though. Um, it's definitely better now than it was because things are opening up. People are able to do more things. And to this day, I still am very careful or at least, I at least try to be very careful. So, but, um, what was the question again? I'm so sorry. <laughs> oh, it was, well, one thing that people might develop through these is there's something called dysthemia. 
or persistent depressive disorder. Mm. Essentially, in order to hit that, you have to have pers you have to hit like a certain amount of symptoms. Um, yeah. A list about nine things, and it has to be persistent over about two years. Mm -hmm. During the pan during the pandemic and during these times, we had an increase in diagnosis of that particular thing, and a increase in suicidal ideations. Right. Um, so one thing that is very important especially in a stressful industry where you're traveling a lot, yeah. is mental clarity, is grounding yourself, keeping yourself mentally safe and sound. Um, and I want to know what you use to help keep yourself safe. Uh, um, just the drive, the drive to remind myself that before the pandemic, I may have taken some things for granted and that I won't do that again, so. During the pandemic, I know it impacted a lot of people's work and people were picking up weird hobbies and everything. What were you doing during the pandemic when you couldn't possibly work? Trying to not cry. Uh, <laughs> um, what was I, repeat the question. Well, like, what were you doing? Were you picking up any hobbies oh. or doing anything? Well, I was able to play a lot more video games and I rarely have time for that. Um, <laughs> yeah, because you're talking about having a Twitch account now. Yes, I do have a Twitch account. It's just Lauren Landa, just one word. Uh, I don't stream as much as I used to, but I do try and at least stream once a week for Talking Tuesdays. Um, but I, I don't really remember. I think just a lot of cleaning that helped. Um, and just uh, trying to remind myself that we just got to keep through this. So, yeah. I think the, um, like, those hobbies, I mean, during the pandemic, I actually completed a museum in Animal Crossing. Oh, wow. I, I, I've never done that in any other games. But at, um, going back to, like, how we're coming out of that now, um, what are you working on now that you'd like to go ahead and promote if you can? Hmm. There's not really a lot I can talk about just yet. All I can say is, is that I'm very excited for the final part for Attack on Titan next year. I'm hoping that it's next year. A lot of people ask me, when's the next, the, when's the next part coming out? The truth is we don't know. We won't know until we get called in <laughs> to the studio. So I just want to thank you very much for taking uh, the time today to meet with us. It's been really great, especially yes. on this anniversary of IndyK. Yes. So is there anything that you would want to just leave with fans, you know, about, you know, what's to come both with the con and with yourself? Well, first of all, um, I, I want to, someone mentioned this to me earlier today. Someone said, you know, oh yeah, we've met several times. And it made me feel so awful because I try, I truly try and remember everybody but I go to so many events and I also have my own personal life. So sometimes I can't remember, but it does not mean in any way, shape or form that I don't appreciate people who come to see me. Um, it's just not my brain having enough room <laughs> essentially. Um, but no, thank you. Huge. Thank you to all of the amazing fans who continue to show me support. Um, I'm super grateful for everybody. Oh, and one thing I kind of want to ask, because it's 25th anniversary of NDK. Yes. What is your number one memory from, like, all the years in NDK? My number one memory... My number one memory was finding out that when I came here, that I was going to be making some very good, amazing friends, that we were going to be in each other's lives for a long time. Thank you. And well, um, I've been Philip with uh, Area DMG uh, or DMGS.com with Julia Bellerback of Geeked Colorado and Lauren Landon. Where can people find you? Oh, okay. So people can find me on only, I only have one page public on social media, and that's Twitter. Lauren underscore A underscore Landa. I have to be the bearer of bad news to people. The fake Instagram account that you're following, which just says Lauren Landa and hasn't had a post since 2018, that is a fake one. I do not have any public Instagram pages. So unfollow that one, because it's not me. Um, but, uh, and also I'm on Twitch under Lauren Landa, one word. And like I said, I try and stream every Tuesday if I can. Thank you. Thank you. Um. Morning, Maya.